Hey everyone, it's Kevin Rempel here with the Sledge Hockey Experience in partnership with Parasport Ontario. And today I'm with Billy Bridges from the Men's Canadian National Team, a 20 plus year veteran in the sport, all time leading points, all time leading scorer. Today we're going to be talking about wrist shots and sledge hockey. Let's get into it. All right, so when we get started in sledge hockey, one of the common questions is, how do I raise the puck? Um, Billy, you have a ton of experience in helping people learn to get started with this. What are some of the things to consider as you learn how to shoot and perform wrist shot in sledge hockey? Yeah, right from the get-go, you got to think about the length of your stick. If your stick is longer, it's harder to shoot it. If your stick is shorter, you have more control, but might not get the same kind of stride. Now, I like to tape my stick where I like to shoot from. And when I first began, my hand was a lot closer to the blade because you get a lot more strength when you're closer than you are from further away. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a second. Now, I didn't get a good shot right away. It took a long time and a lot of practice. I put a lot of holes in the garage door, but before that, I could barely even raise it. So the first thing I want to show you is just a little bit of fundamentals about how to shoot this puck with this stick. Now, first thing that any previous stand-up hockey player will notice is that the lie of the stick is much different. When you shoot and stick handle that puck, you want to make sure you get your knuckle home right on the ice. It'll make it that much easier to handle, and you're not going to flop it over. Now, to get a good wrist shot, same with stand-up hockey, you want to start with the puck on the heel of your stick. The heel is that bottom point that touches when your stick is flat, or where you start taping your stick if you tape it like me. The way that you're going to raise it and get a lot of power is to have a roll on your puck. You can flip it by just pulling up, but you're never going to generate that power that everybody's looking for without that roll. Now, I like to start with the puck about hip level. I like to point my sled at the target or a little bit to the side. If you're a right-handed shooter, sometimes pointing your toes to the right side of your target will give you a lot more power to generate through. Now I like to bring my puck back, again, start on the heel, and I like to push forward, get that roll, and then point to my target. Now you notice that nowhere in my shot am I lifting or pulling or getting my shoulder back. I'm always driving forward. Okay. Now when I first started, I did 100 pucks a day just sliding along the ice because that's all I could do until I could generate enough power to be able to get that roll to raise it up. Now you'll notice that if I shoot at the top shelf or I shoot at the bottom, my follow through is almost the exact same. It's just how I point at the end of it is going to give you the height, the leverage, the strength that you need to really get those shots on net. Here, let me demonstrate a few. Now, you'll notice as you keep on shooting more and more along the ice that you'll eventually start to pick it up and be able to lift that puck. And not just by flipping it, by getting the roll and pointing to your target. When you start your shot, there's three phases. You're going to open up with the puck on your heel. It's going to roll to the tip and then you're going to lift it and raise it. You don't need ice time, you don't even need a sled, you don't even need pucks. You can sit down at your home, grab a tennis ball, grab a, a golf ball if you have a, a cement wall to shoot against, and, and just take your shots. You, you only get better by continuously doing it, day after day, night after night, because you fall in love with it. And that's how I fell in love with the, with the whole sport of sledge hockey. One of the amazing things about our sport is that we have two sticks and two different sides to shoot, stick handle, and push with. Now, it's just as important to work on your left hand or your non-dominant hand, in case you're left-handed, 
as it is working on your, your cannon of your, of your right hand. Now, one of the skills that you'll learn as you start playing, you'll notice that you can pass the puck underneath. Okay, take advantage of that to get it to the outside hand. If the defender's on this side, to shoot with your other hand. Now, fundamentals are all the exact same. You want to start with the puck on the heel of your stick, where I start taping. You want to have your hand in the right spot. If you feel like the puck's too heavy, move your hand up towards the blade. There's no worries at all. You want to keep your knuckles on the ice if you can, or just above. Bring it back behind your hip and get a nice roll, okay? If you notice that your puck is wobbling, it just means that you're probably starting your shot too close to the tip of your stick. It's very important to start that shot, at least when you're learning, at the very bottom of your stick so you get the whole roll so you can follow through to your target and score on that shooter tutor, which I can't. You'll notice that I point my toes a little bit left of my target because I feel that it helps me follow through. But one thing I do a lot is I practice being uncomfortable. I practice a lot shooting away from my body because it is a lot more difficult but you'll find yourself in that situation in a game a lot. And it's more important to work on your weaknesses than your strengths. Thanks a lot for joining us today, learning how to take some wrist shots. Whether you're at the very beginning of para ice hockey or you've been playing forever, everyone always needs to work on their shot. And it's crucial to get your fundamentals down first before you start to try to cheat and get away with all the little nifty tricks that we do all the time, okay? Thank you for joining us. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos in the future. And if you'd like to learn more about sledge hockey or the program and how to get involved, visit playsledgehockey.com or parasportontario.ca.